There's something that's always fascinated me about the dynamics of the professional wrestling fan base. There's a lot of you don't believe what you see in the media, nor should you. You assume most, if not all, politicians are bad and end up evil and are crooked. And again, you're right to think so. But yet, when it comes to professional wrestling, so often you're so quick to believe anything and everything that somebody in professional wrestling has told you. Like it is the God's honest gospel truth. Oh, oh, hallelujah! They said it, so it must be true! Professional wrestling, where the whole fundamental premise of the business is to sell a lie. Boys and girls act like somebody they're actually not. To try and pretend like stories are real when we know they are scripted, they participate in matches that we know the results are predetermined and they are planned out. But somehow it's such a big leap from everything that these guys do is a work, but when they say something else, it's absolutely the gospel truth. I don't get it. It just confounds me. Which brings me to this all-in 2018 show on September 1st at the Sears Center, Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Everybody was so quick to celebrate on Sunday. Oh my God! They sold the event out! 10,000 seats in under 30 minutes! They took the challenge from Dave Meltzer and ran with it, and by God, they proved it could work. They showed just how big of stars they are. Oh, how could y'all be so naive? And before you go into your New Japan cuck mode and your bullet club loving selves and get all caught up in your feelings and emotions, just try hearing me out for a couple of minutes and, and, and give me a fair chance to explain. And at the end of all of this, maybe you'll realize what I'm, not, what I'm saying is not that bad at all and I'm actually complimenting the guy. But surely a lot of you won't take it that way. Because you spoke out against the Bullet Club and the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes and New Japan and Arawich and how dare you, you are the devil pond scum negative. I hope you die tomorrow. But seriously though, you're telling me that this event sold 10,000 tickets in under 30 minutes. Fans bought close to 10,000 tickets in under 30 minutes. Yet New Japan, who ran a show a few months ago out in what Long Beach, put like 4,500, 5,000 people in there and sold those tickets pretty quickly, now comes back to do a show at the Kyle Palace in San Francisco, a 10,000 seat venue, and they've had trouble selling half of the seats. But Cody Rhodes, Matt Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, they're so great, they could sell out twice the venue in a lot less time. In under 30 minutes. Oh, and Dave Meltzer's saying it's true. The same guy who for years has continued to not understand basic fundamentals of arithmetic, as we would call his version of arithmetic, Meltzer math. Oh my god, the Pontiac Silverdome for football would seat close to 80,000 people and you add all these thousands of people where the football field would be. There's no way they actually did 93,000 plus for WrestleMania 3 or all the other times he says the WWE fudges their numbers. Not understanding the basic premise of number of tickets sold, and then the number of comps given, which is standard for massive events, for the Super Bowl, NBA Finals, all of them. There's a massive amount of corporate comps. That's the way the thing works. But now, because Dave Meltzer is sitting there, like he doesn't have any fucking skin in the game, like he's not helping out in cahoots with all this, because there's absolutely nothing that suggests that he's just one big raging bullet club New Japan fuckboy Mark Schill. 
Now because Dave Meltzer is saying all of a sudden he believes in attendance figure. What a surprise! It involves New Japan fucking guys. It has to be true. Give me a damn break. Like when we're talking about business, one of the most important things you could do in business is mitigate your risk. You want to minimize your risk as much as possible and make sure that the reward is worth it. And the greater the risk, the higher the potential reward. But you are always trying to look for ways to diminish, mitigate, minimize risk. And when you look at this, and you look at what Cody and the Bucks were trying to do, they were trying to sell out a 10,000 seat venue with no real national or international television backing them up, doing it entirely on their own, financing it entirely on their own, and doing it through the internet. That is inherently risky, unless you have a pretty good plan. What would seem to make more sense to me than what a lot of people believe is that these guys did it because Meltzer challenged them, and it was an actual legit challenge, and as a result, they put the tickets out there and competitively priced them so that way the fans could buy all 10,000 of them in quick order just so that way they could prove. To me, with them shouldering the burden of fronting the event themselves, funding the event themselves, there would have to be some type of payoff. And just saying that you gave away a bunch of tickets that's significantly under what the market could have commanded that they could have gotten doesn't indicate great business sense or risk mitigation, it would indicate that these knuckleheads are some of the biggest marks in wrestling in this type of event doing that type of crap, which would be further vindication and validation of that viewpoint. No, instead, what would be more likely is that these guys, knowing that they've got to pay for the venue, that they've got to pay for the talent, they've got to pay for travel expenses, they've got to pay for production, not to mention potentially trying to get this set up on some type of iPay-Per-View or some other type of pay-per-view or streaming service, there's a lot that goes into us. There's a lot of upfront cost. And I highly doubt, even though these guys have made some money for themselves, that they're going to risk going to the poorhouse in order to make it happen. So smart business people, which I will pretend Cody and the Bucks are for the sake of argument, would do what the super wealthy do. Now, if you didn't inherit the wealth, what do you do? You leverage other people's money to make your own. Therefore, mitigating your own risk. I'm sure they came out of pocket some on their own, and quite a bit of it I'm sure they got financed. They took out loans, they did what they needed to do. Doesn't that seem more logical than saying, hey, it could cost you potentially a couple hundred thousand to do this type of event. I'm going to entirely 100% come out of pocket all on my own on this. That seems pretty stupid, doesn't it? It seems more logical that you would borrow that money leveraging other people's money in order to make your own. So then, when it comes to putting the tickets out for sale, you hype it up, you hold back the tickets for a while to create an artificial demand, which is exactly what they did, which is exactly the smart thing to do. Then what you do is, sure, you're going to have a few thousand fans that legitimately buy tickets. I'm not disputing that. I'm pretty confident that up front, several thousand fans, 40 to 60% of the total tickets sold, we're fans. I, I don't dispute that. I have no doubts about that whatsoever. There is definitely a market there that would indicate based off of the quick success of Japan selling out that Strong Style Evolve show as quickly as they did, that there is a market of four to 6,000 tickets that could be sold just like that for an event like this. I find that believable. But what I don't find believable is that you got another four to 6,000 tickets that were sold on top of that in incredibly quick order like they were. I'm just not buying that. Nor does that seem like an incredibly logical business strategy because especially when you look again at the price point at which the tickets were listed for this all-in event, it did not seem to leave a ton of margin for profit. So to me, it would seem much more logical to say, hey, we are going to strategically price these tickets low. We will get a few thousand fans to buy some, and the rest of them will go to the secondary ticket market. By marking them as low as we do, we ensure that we get 100% face value and automatically have cut any potential losses, 
and you have enticed these secondary ticket brokers to come in and buy them because they know there's going to be massive markup potential there. You can take a $128 or whatever ringside seat and sell it for a thousand bucks and you know somebody is going to pay for it and they will. You would also think it would stand to reason that if you were going to take on the financial risk of an event like this and if especially you took out a loan or some other type of financing line of credit uh, to help fund this event, it would make sense to provide yourself some cost certainty and some profit certainty of your own by purchasing a set of those tickets so that way you could then turn around and sell them yourself on the secondary ticket market. I don't know about you, but that seems like a very, very logical thing to do. Does it not? Does it not? Because if you think about it, what proof do you actually have that fans bought the vast majority of these tickets? Especially when you think about an event like WrestleMania. I know it's a much bigger venue, and it's the WWE, and maybe people are disenfranchised with the product, but it is still WrestleMania. It is an entire week. It is an event. Is it happening? But even the day before WrestleMania this year, they still had tickets for sale and on Ticketmaster, a primary ticket broker, not the secondary market like StubHub or SeatGeek or any of those other dudes. On the primary market, there were still tickets available at face value. <clears throat> and this is WrestleMania, where people would be coming from all over the world. They planned vacations and trips around WrestleMania. But you're telling me Cody and the Young Bucks sold out 10,000 tickets to fans that quickly? Bullshit. Brokers came in and bought a ton of those tickets. And even if you're going to be the wise ass that says, well, this site only has this many, and that site only has that many, and that site only has that many. Do you really think that's all the tickets that they would have available right now? Do you really think they would shoot their wad that quickly and list everything available? Bullshit. Also, don't you think it would make some sense for the guys in charge of the event to do something to ensure a greater profit margin for themselves? I'm just saying, if you were looking to do this event and actually turn a profit, you would not have listed the tickets at the prices that they did. That was not how they were going to make their money. They're making their money off of the people coming and buying the merch and doing the other stuff, the meet and greets and so on and so forth. And then they're making their money via the secondary ticket market. I'm sorry. That's just the logical thing to do. If you were putting together a show like this, would you front the money entirely out of your own pocket and then significantly undercut yourself with your ticket prices? minimizing your profit margin so you took a big risk a massive risk for very little reward would you really be that big of a mark to do that or would you have a better more logical approach to how you would conduct your business this is not being done to hate on what Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks are doing with All In I hope 10,000 people are there and I hope the show is a raging success because that'll be great for professional wrestling. But I'm also not buying that Cody Rhodes, who is a liar and a piece of shit himself, has been documented this year, wouldn't stoop to doing something like this to ensure a maximum return for the risk that he is taking on. And frankly, I couldn't blame him and it would be the logical, smart thing to do. To me, sitting there and believing that they just sold these tickets at significantly under market value is a really naive way of looking at things and it is, is a discredit to them. And it's just dumb. These guys knew what they're doing. These guys work in an industry where the entire premise of what they do is built on a lie. Why would you think that they are telling you the full story and the full truth now? If anything... I respect them more if they did do some of the things that I'm talking about. And I know there were tons of tickets bought and they're going to be available in the weeks and months to come on the secondary ticket market. Just because you don't see all of them now doesn't mean you won't. And what proof do you have that guys like Cody and the Young Bucks didn't buy a lot of those tickets themselves so they could later put them out on the secondary market? 
or have somebody do it for them and give them a cut of the proceeds and the markup. Seems like a pretty smart way to do things. Would seem like selling them at the ticket prices that they did and claiming that you sold them all out in half an hour is pretty naive. I'm just saying. Ten th fans didn't buy all 10,000 of these seats. Just stop. Stop being so naive that you automatically believe everything that somebody in professional wrestling tells you. These guys work in an industry built on lies. More likely than not, they are lying. Like I've been a Hogan fan for so many years. I know with Hogan, one of his fundamental principles is he is full of shit. He is consistently going to work you. He is always working an angle for Terry. He is full of shit. And that's what he is. And so are a lot of these other wrestlers. I mean... Bearing it to New Japan, who actually has some history and track record and what they've been able to sell so far with Cow Palace, but now these same guys that are a part of that, you know damn good and well will be a part of that show. We're a part of the last show. Now all of a sudden they've been able to strike it out on their own and they were twice as successful in a fraction of the time? Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just doesn't pass the muff test. What do I mean by the muff test? The smell test. The shit smells like tuna. To me, my opinion, is there's much more to the story, and that's okay. I just refuse to get caught up in the naiveness of believing that fans bought the vast, vast majority of these tickets. Because the reality is, when it comes to these big, massive events, that's just not the way it works. And I'd be highly surprised if Cody and the Bucks didn't do something to get some extra skin in the game and get some extra cash out of the game. And frankly, if you were in their position, wouldn't you do the exact same thing? If you had any brains for business, which a lot of you will attribute to Cody and the Bucks... That's exactly what the fuck you would do. So stop being so naive and realize this event can be a big massive success and that they're not telling you the whole story when they say the event sold out in half an hour. Just keep an eye on the secondary ticket market in the weeks and months to come. That'll tell you the story that you need to know.